Greetings, ladies and mentalgents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Classification Ghost Wolf, written by Farm Witch 4275. I stand quietly in front of the council, my hands shivering, not from the presence of the Grand Council, but rather from my findings. I, Master Scribe Thraxus the Seventh of the Onara, child of Brax Paxson, have found something truly beyond pale. My council, Lords of the Empire, I come to you with news of my recent findings with a species known as Human. In the newly discovered Terran Republic, in the segmentum solar arm of the galaxy, I said, hanging my head low. You do not seem enthusiastic about this discovery. Surely a new species could not bring you this much trouble? One of the council members asked. They did not. When I first appeared my ship on one of their outer colonies and broadcasted my intentions, I was at first extremely confused. Unlike previous civilizations, the humans offered no military response and welcomed me with open arms. I was justifiably surprised by this gesture. They even gave me complete access to their entire historical archive. I shall send you all a copy of this now, please, sir. Be warned, it is uh, rather long. I pressed a button on my console and beeping from across the room came over every computer terminal. Please do wait to read it and fooled until after this presentation. Thank you. In continuing my presentation, I shall start with a statement. The humans are impossible. The council regarded me with questioning looks and raised brows. Could you elaborate? We all went through a unification period. A time when a great filter of hatred and division is disassembled and removed from our consciousness, and we ascend to the stars as one pure whole being, either through means of conflict, of cleansing or mass fratricide to clean unreasonable elements, or simply a great unification through peace and trade. Humanity, as it so seems, is the only species in recorded galactic history to have never had a unification event. I said and used the console prompt to show flags of various factions located within Terran space. Hundreds of flags, each one representing a different faction. The thought of this made the entire room gasp in shock simultaneously. A space-bearing FTL-capable species that operates with any form of centralized governing body. How was this even possible? I was quite shocked as well. The sheer diversity of opinion was staggering. In order to operate, I had to command an entire starbase full of representatives from each faction. I have been alive for 70,000 cycles, my friends, and never have I encountered anything like them before. I explained, showing a few pictures of humans side by side. And here is the shocking part. Not that they never had a unification. Not that they have a multitude of factions all operating in one system. Every possible entity you can imagine exists within their borders. Corporate conglomerates, theological autocracies, religious cults, federal republics, all the councils... Even factional groups resembling primitive tribes operate in that system. The truly shocking thing, my friends, is this. They all operate with any form of conflict or civil war. Lies, barked one counselor. Impossible. You must be on medications, insulted another. Are you certain you have all the facts correct? This sounds highly improbable, spoke another. Silence, I yelled. This shut the dinner fast. I had never done this before. Never in any of my lifetimes had I ever spoken aloud so harshly. Please, I have forwarded you a complete record of the inner workings of what I found in the system. And improbable as it sounds, I assure you, it is the absolute truth. 
Have I ever steered you wrong before? A stunned silence gripped the room. They knew it to be true. This, however, is not why I am here. I shall send you a complete report on all of my findings within the hour. I assure you, it is a lot simpler than it really sounds. They uh, found a way to make it actually work. This, however, is not why I am here. First, I wish to talk about planetary classifications. A short lecture to start as a reminder. I pressed another button, and a series of planets appeared, all of different classes. Here we see the basic planetary bodies. Each, although in some ways similar, can be classified by a simple system. We have paradise worlds, noted for the fact that they are the best place to live for anyone ever. We have garden worlds, just a cut below paradise worlds, but ideal for sapient life to evolve. Ocean worlds, or ice sheet worlds, planets whose mass is made of water or ice. Magmatic, or fractured worlds, whose entire surface is an ocean of molten rock. These planets are either forming or are naturally volcanic. Then we have the more dangerous spectrum. The hazard worlds are just below dangerous enough to be considered difficult, but not impossible to colonize or harvest. Death worlds are a cut above that, and are where most sapient life originates. These contain abundant life, including fauna, flora, parasites, and various predatory or prey creatures. Then, there are toxic worlds, or storm worlds, as they are known. These worlds are extremely hazardous to almost all life forms that aren't based in abstract biology such as the lithoids or in machinery. Ladies and gentlemen of the Grand Council, I have to provide you today with the conclusive evidence that a new class of world, this world can only be found in one place, the human home system, Sol. I pressed a button and showed a picture of a relatively normal planetary body a blue and green continental planet, to the council. They looked at me confused. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, I present Earth, birthplace of humanity, a ghost world. Ghost world? Uh, that sounds uh, rather ominous, the councilman said, peeking his head out of his booth to try and take a closer look. Allow me to elaborate. We all know that all living beings have souls. Sapient life forms have greater souls. Animals and parasites and the like have lesser souls. All souls, as we all know, Council, have the capacity to produce an electrical charge. This charge can be measured with an appropriate equipment. A demonstration. Marx Raxuscus! I bellowed, and a form of shadows appeared in my short statute in turn. Here. Right, here we go. I attached some cables and wires to him to a special device known as a gaussometer, a device that measures the strength of the soul based on electrical discharge. As we all know, this is a gaussometer. I do understand anyone's reservations about this scenario, but it is okay. Marx Raxacus here fully consented to a public reading. It is quite all right now. We set the levels and... Um, I let the measuring continue and finish. My intern looked rather proud of himself at the result. Now the process is simple. They we took a soul, drained it of all of its electrical energy into a power bank, and released it back into the aether. This would provide a power charge based on the strength of the soul. And for a long period of time, my friend here has a soul strength of, uh, 247 kilowatts, and can discharge up to 800 cycles of total energy. The crowd clapped in return. It was indeed an impressive amount. I allowed the crowd to finish the clapping and my intern to take some actually deserved praise. So, uh, can anyone venture a guess as to the discharge capacity of the average human soul? The chamber fell silent. Several quizzical looks came from them all. I shall tell you. Several humans all came forward and willingly gave their measurements for the sake of study. Such examples were, uh, a deckhand on board of a fishing boat, a fleet admiral for a privacy protection fleet, a small juvenile child in school, and finally, corporate CEO in a starship factory. The final results are as follows. 
I cleared my throat loudly and ensured I had everyone's attention. I collected as much data as I could, of course, and went through over a thousand volunteers. This produced an average result. This average was as follows. An average total output of 1.8 gigawatts of energy, with the time discharge of anywhere between 10,000 and 85,000 cycles. I had to hold back my laughter as my poor intern's jaw hit the floor. His arms drooped, his shoulders collapsed in sheer astonishment and shock. The entire council let out a collective gasp. Several members passed out and more of a few members suffered some unusual chemical reactions due to the shock. Now, dear council members, consider for a moment, if you will, one single human can produce the equivalent energy of a class 3 fusion reactor, I said, and let them think. Now, dear council members, think carefully of a simple implication that Earth, cradle of humanity, currently has on its surface an active population of 6 billion humans. I once again let the council think. The expressions on their faces were something astonishing. Even the council from the machine collective had morphed its computerized features into an expression of sheer terror. Now consider the residual spiritual energy of a sapient species across a hundred thousand years. The collective spiritual energy of one hundred billion of the same souls, all concentrated in that one single tiny little planet. A deafening silence surrounded the council as my last statement finished. A few minutes passed, not even breathing could be heard. And now, dear friends, imagine that same thing, but now the souls of billions more humans rapidly spreading across the stars, unchecked, unchallenged, spread across nearly 700 planets, stations, and star systems. One counselor finally snapped and let out an ear-piercing shriek of terror. His fur standing on end, and as he stood up from his seat, then promptly passed out. However, that's not the worst of it. I have collated more data on the scribe of a specific faction, the Sons of the Void, a religious group. My readings, my friends, just a simple scribe, a record keeper, mind you. 87 gigawatts of energy with a time discharge of 200,000 years. The council stood in deafened, horrified silence for a solid half an hour. If I didn't know better, I'd swear this period they all forgot how to breathe. This council, I said, breaking the silence, is why I'm adding a new planetary classification to our index. Earth is a ghost world. There is so much staggering amounts of residual spiritual energy on that one single planet that it is in essence the closest thing that we'll ever get to a direct connection to the afterlife, without first being dead. The planet started its life as a class 12 death world, for spirit's sake. As far as I'm concerned, our first immediate reaction is to permanently ban any and all spirit seekers, telepaths, and soul hunters from that star system. I shudder to think of the results that should they dare set foot there. A further five or so minutes of silence as the council considered what was going on, before one councilman somehow found a way to talk. And, uh, oh, what of the humans themselves? They uh, seem strangely ignorant of their latent power. For the better, in my opinion. An extreme few seem to take advantage of it, and uh, all for some very silly or noble reasons. As for the species itself, fractious as it may be, they were more than elated when they figured out that they were not alone in the universe. More elated even than when I gave them some documentation about the nature of council society. Apparently, their aspect of the law and order bears some shocking similarity to ours, to a, uh, frankly, frightening degree. It would not be a difficult task of any kind to integrate them into the community as a whole, fractious as they are. Military prospects, one councilman asked. Technologically, they are inferior, but extremely adaptable and highly variable. Whatever strategy you think you have, they likely have thousands of counters to that. Whatever ships you have, they have two dozen different types of ships that can directly counter it. And even so, they pointed towards something on the upper level behind me. 
The council's eyes once again widened in terror at the sight of the shadowed human form staring back at them from the corner of the viewing deck above. It had been watching them the whole time. The council screamed in terror and hastily scrambled out of their chairs. A few souls, brave or foolhardy as they may be, stayed behind, locked in fear with the shadow of humanity's soul, now staring straight at them with a billion pairs of eyes. I didn't think so. I think for now that concludes our meeting. I gathered up my documents and herded my terrified intern towards the exit. I looked up to find the billions of eyes now looking at me. I looked carefully at the small trinket I had taken with me, knowing full well what I'd just done. Humanity, or at least its entire spiritual realm, was in this room with me this whole time. A small locket containing the picture of a young human woman with the initials C.I. engraved into it. It allowed the spirits a window to where they needed to be. A mixture of reverence and fear overcame me as I entered the elevator to my study. I knew that it was there the whole time. Humans. What has the universe created that the spirit realm can so easily use a conduit to our reality? What have the gods made that so easily crosses the threshold? I retreated to my study, still with humanity's shadow following behind me, barely registering the corner of my eye. What? What did we find? What have the gods unleashed against us? I sat down in my chair and put a framed photograph on my desk. It was a picture of me surrounded by humans, smiling faces, happy thoughts, and beer pint mugs. I looked at it to thought for a moment and felt the shadowed presence vanish as I smiled from the memories of the pub crawl I had. Nah, we'll be fine. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catal, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.